guys, I hope you all are well. Today we are going to talk about the types of variables that are present in psychological research. So let's get into that. Cause and effect independent variable and dependent variable. Alright, so how we look at the independent variable is that the independent variable is the factor under investigation in an experiment whether it's a laboratory experiment, whether it's a field experiment. And this variable is the, is the one we are testing and we are looking the effects of this on our dependent variable, right? So this independent variable is manipulated to create one or, sorry, not one, two or more um, experimental conditions and is expected to be responsible for changes in the dependent variable, right? So basically what we do is that independent variable is manipulated and we measure the effect of that manipulation on our dependent variable. So let's take an example. Um, uh, a research is being conducted in a university and we are looking the effects of different kinds of light levels on attention by students right so one thing we need to keep in mind is to operationalize our um, variables how do we do that we need to provide a definition as to how we are measuring our dependent variable and how our independent variable will be manipulated. So how will I operationalize this? Um, we can say that children who sit in a bright light class will perform much better in the test that they're given later on than students who were sitting in the dull light class, right? So basically, how have I operationalized my independent variable? I have created two light level conditions. One is the bright light class and one is the dull light class, right? And I am looking the effect of that on attention by students. How am I operationalizing attention? I'm operationalizing it through a test, right? Maybe a, the teacher was teaching some topic in class and while that uh, the light levels were manipulated and after that they are given a test to see their uh, to see how much attention they paid, paid in class so whether the effect of uh, whether light le uh, light levels paid a, uh, played a role in the attention by the students later on all right so we are looking the effects of that now um, Ideally, psychologists want their independent variable to be responsible for dependent variable. However, it is possible that in the psychological research, many other extraneous variables are, um, are there who may be responsible for the changes in the dependent variable. So let's talk about extraneous variables. Extraneous variables are other is an other variable other than the DV and the IV and is said to be, um, and it can affect the levels of the, all the levels of the IV or it can affect one level of the IV, which is like systematically. Thus, when it does that, extraneous variables are basically participant variables or situational variables, all right? But when it affects the results of the study, when it affects our IV and causes some changes in the DV, when an extraneous variable causes some changes in the DV, then that becomes a confounding variable. All right, because uh, extraneous variables is avail are available in like every psychological research, but they do find ways of controlling them. Right. So let's study. Uh, let's take the example of. Um, Bandura. In Bandura, um, they made sure that the sequence of the toys in the experimental room was standardized across all trials to make sure that any variation in the sequence of the toys that were presented to the children were not the cause of 
their imitation of aggression, right? So that's a control that they used to control the extraneous variable. However, if they did not control for that and that became a cause in the DV, which was um, our imitation for aggression, then that would have become a confounding variable because it has confounded our results. It has made our results really difficult to analyze and difficult to work out. We are not sure if cause and effect has been established. Ideally, in, um, in lab experiments, it is really easier to control extraneous variables because a lot of controls are available, right? But in field experiments, obviously there can be a lot of aspects in the environment which can definitely lead to some um, confounding variables. So cause and effect is definitely more easier to get established in a lab experiment, right? So it's easier to control extraneous variables there um, so that we are sure that our independent variable is the only factor which has caused the changes in our dependent variable. All right, so let's talk about the types of extraneous variables that can be out there. Um, extraneous variables can either be participant variables or situation variables. Participant variables refers to any aspect of our, um, of our specific participant that may have caused the changes in the data that we have um, obtained from him. So let's take an example of um of doodling right so we are we are researching the effects of doodling on memory later on all right so that, uh, uh, we can definitely take the example of andrady right so she was researching on the effects of doodling the effects of doodling on their memory later on right so what if one of our participants or some of our participants um their their memory might already be really good they might already have this ability to remember things better than others those are what we call individual differences and those and they become participant variables when they uh, affect our results because then the fact that that person that particular participant has a good memory the that affected our results rather than our IV, which was doodling, right? So that became a cause instead of our IV. So our results then become highly, um, uh, it's, it's really difficult to establish cause and effect and internal validity is pretty lower in those kind of studies, right? So any aspect of the environment, any individual characteristic of the person that may cause some changes or that causes some effects in the data that we obtain from him or her, all right? And uh, situational variables can be like any feature of the experiment that could influence a participant's behavior. So basically, let's talk about another example. Um, there is a researcher who's uh, researching the effects of different types of chairs on concentration in class. All right, but at the same time, the other class has a dull light and one class has a bright light, right? So maybe the students were able to concentrate better in one class because of the fact that the class had a bright light, right? So then our results, then the changes in concentration is not because of the different types of chairs, it's because of the different light levels. So that is a situational variable. That is a variable in our environment that has caused the effect, that has caused the changes in our dependent variable. So that is an extraneous variable as well, right? So Participant variables are, in short, any individual differences that may cause differences in our dependent variable. And situational variables is basically any aspect in the environment of the study or um, anything that can uh, lead to change, uh, lead to um, 
changes in the behavior or the data that we acquire from our participants. All right, so um, a little bit more um, elaboration on confounding variables is that confounding variables, uh, here's an example here, um, we, are, we are seeing the effect of activity levels, which is like doing exercises and stuff. We are seeing the effect of that on weight gain. However, what if our research has a wide range of age levels? Like that can be good, it can be representative of the entire population. However, we are just seeing the effects of activity level on weight gain. What if one of our participants is 18 year is an 18 year old and the other uh, and our other participant is, is a 55 year old? People say that as you grow older, it is much um, it is much difficult for the person to lose weight, right? So the age may become a confounding variable in our results. The, the differences in our dependent variable is not because of the activity level. It's because of the differences in the ages, right? So I hope that's clear and that's all for today. Thank you for listening to me and see you next time.